What's up everyone, TerraQuake here, and welcome back to the Pokemon Fire Red walkthrough. In the last part, we got this post-game adventure started by checking out one island back at Mount Ember and grabbing the ruby, and then we came here to Four Island, took care of some business in the Icefall Cave, and it is now time to skip over Five Island, actually, and head over to Six Island. So, yeah, you're gonna want to hit Other, and that will bring up the other three islands. Now, Six Island, I'm pretty sure is like the largest or second largest Sevi Island, so I'm not even going to be able to cover it all in today's video. It'll probably be split up into two, but if we look at the map, which I think I still have in key items, I do, you're going to see that Six Island kind of has a north side and a south side, and it's all linked thanks to this uh, pathway called the water path and then the green path. And basically, if you want to progress as quickly as you can, you're going to want to head south to Ruin Valley. That's where the Sapphire is located. However, we're going to be checking out the north side in today's video. Now, honestly, I'm just kind of winging it in terms of like items and, you know, other locations of trainers and whatnot. So if I take a second to read over my guide and stuff, then just know that like my microphone didn't mute. It's just I'm trying to, you know, make sure I don't miss anything. But anyways, I don't know why I walked in there. Um, yeah, this is the little town here on Six Island. Now, I'm pretty sure just, yeah, behind the Pokemon Center, which means you have to come all the way around the Pokemart, is a hidden Lepaberry. And that is actually, like, the only item you can get here in the little town area. So, let's move on to Water Path. Now, here on Water Path, there are a ton of new Pokemon that you can get, a ton of trainers to battle. I'll try my best to go ahead and list out all of the Pokemon, which include Sentret, and that honestly may be it. Maybe there's some more surfing Pokemon. Yeah, you can get Remoraid and Leaf Green by fishing, and Quillfish and Fire Red, so that's cool, but actually that's about it. Okay, so maybe it's just a lot of trainers, not as many Pokemon, but let's go ahead and start battling some trainers. So uh, yeah, this is, once again, the uh, Water Path, and we're going to be heading up north today that man just had a team of four and I believe down here is just some grass and a wild Pokemon because the wild Pokemon are actually pretty darn high leveled and you're gonna find that same trend with the trainers too um, the trainers are gonna have like high 40s low mid 50s so yeah keep that in mind but for now I believe there's some hidden berries that we can find and just down here leads you to Ruin Valley, but again, we're going to leave that for tomorrow's episode. I'm just trying to grab these berries. I don't think I missed any. It was just those two. All right, so let's move on to the north. Again, I'm going to try my best to get all the items. At least I'll be able to fight all the trainers, but uh, yeah, I might miss out on some things because Bulbapedia kind of gives the items off from north to south, which doesn't really help because you can't go north to south when you first get to Six Island. But it is a-okay. So let's go ahead and fight this swimmer. And we're actually going to come up on another island um, with a couple more houses. And, uh, you know, I'll talk about it in a bit. Now, Water Path going to the north is eventually going to lead to Green Path. And then Outcast Island, which is just a little small island at the very top of Six Island. So, uh, yeah, again, it's completely optional. You don't have to go all this way, fight all these trainers. If you want to get through here as quickly as you can, then you can head south towards Ruin Valley, but yeah, I'm really glad that Fire Red and Leaf Green got a post game. Red and Blues was basically nothing, so uh, yeah, it just, you know, there wasn't really much going on, which was pretty unfortunate, but uh, let's go ahead and give this a Lantern a return. It's really cool that we're seeing, like, all of these, you know, Gen 2, Gen 3 mods. I'm glad they didn't just keep on reusing Generation 1 Pokemon for the post game, but uh, that's what... A lot of games typically do you know they give you the national decks and uh for the post game and then you see a bunch of pokemon you haven't seen yet anyways did rapidash level up i don't think you did did you no you're still 50 okay i don't know why i thought you did all right we will continue our way north fighting another trainer probably not a good idea that i have a rapidash out against all of these swimmers dude but it is fine this guy's saying don't be hating bro i'm gonna be hating especially since you have a gyarados ew um, once again, though, level 50, so yeah, make sure you're prepared. I mean, I haven't done any grinding throughout the series, and I'm still, like, right on par with them, so most likely you guys will be fine as well. Also, um, just in case you are wondering on my first opinions 
for uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet because, you know, I feel like I've talked about that so much in the past week since they just dropped on Friday. But yeah, I've done two streams so far at the time I'm recording this video, and it is a ton of fun, man. I love the games. I love the new Pokemon so far. I have stayed spoiler free, so like, I'm still seeing everything for the first time as I go through the game. And once again, I'm streaming those over on the main channel if you want to come and watch me play them live. But here we go. This is the little island I was talking about. I think we have, yeah, another double battle. And did this little girl just call me a Pokemon? Like, what is that? Like, come on. Mew and Mia. Gosh, that reminds me of the me on um, the Wii. That looks like freaking Dora the Explorer. I think her name's Mia. I don't know. Okay, I don't really want to get static, so I'm just going to Fire Blast and Surf, you know? Luckily, in this game, Surf does not hit my partner Pokemon, because if it did, then Blaze would be dead, and that would be bad. But it does not, so we are chilling. We do be chilling. One Surf is going to knock out the Pikachu, and down you go. So I'm pretty sure only one house on here is uh, worth, you know, taking note of. The other one kind of just has an NPC in it. Let's see if it's this one, though. Is my guess correct? Is it you, my friends? You're talking about your height? Okay, yeah. See, that's that's just the NPC. We don't like that guy. We do not like that guy. We're going to go over to this house. If I didn't run into a trainer, <laughs> all right, whatever. I guess, you know, it's good to get the battle out of the way. And, man, look at this aroma lady. She got all that dust coming off her, and she also has a sun kern. The Pokemon with, like, the weakest base stat. Bro, Rapidash could, like, sneeze on this thing, and it would die. I mean, come on now. We're really using a level 49 Sunkern in the post game. Maybe she just didn't have... Well, never mind. She does have access to a Sunstone because she also has a Sunflora. Not that it's really too much better. One Ember is probably going to knock this man out. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm sorry, Sunflora. Watch it. She's now going to hit like five times with the bullet. See, just as Karma, you know, just because of Karma. All right, whatever. Um, I guess I'll give you a Fire Blast then. I mean, you know, I didn't want to do it to you, Sunfloor, but you kind of took that Ember a lot better than I thought you would. All right, so down goes that Aroma Lady, and as I was saying, it's this house to the left that you uh, might want to take a look at because there's a person inside. Actually, what does the sign say? Wanted the ultimate horn. <laughs> oh, that could be taken in another direction, but yeah, um, she's going to want a really big Heracross. And you can actually find Heracross on this island. I forget where, though. I think I think it's literally, yeah, here in Green Path in this forest. So that's pretty convenient. Real quick, there's a hidden ore and a berry behind her house. But, yeah, if you want to go catch a uh, Heracross, I'm not sure if it actually has to meet a size requirement or not. But um, if you want to go catch one, you can and bring it back to her, and she will give you a Nest Ball as a reward. Why did I go use a Max Repel? It's just like habit every time I get on a Pokemon to surf. Now right over here is an elixir, and I think that does it for all of the items on the north side of Six Island. So, hey, look at me go. I actually did a good job. Anyways, let's move on to Green Path, and this is this little forest that I was talking about. So, uh, actually, wait, is it? No, this is Pattern Bush. Green Path continues after the forest. So, Pattern Bush, um, I think it's really just a bunch of grass. I don't even know if there's any trainers in it. Let me uh, quickly run through the Pokemon, though, if I could get to them quickly enough. Here we go. You can get Spinarak and Fire Red, Ladybug, and Leaf Green. You can find Heracross in here, as I was just talking about. And I believe that is it. Yeah, that's it for Pattern Bush. Let's see if there's any items to get, though. It doesn't look like it. So, yeah, this is just a place to really catch Heracross and, oh, I guess fight some trainers, too. I like how I completely just overlooked the trainers. I was like, yeah, there's some Pokemon in here, and oh yeah, there's people too, but I mean, you know, we're gonna beat these random trainers. We don't struggle with people like them. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you don't even have to fight these trainers. You can like run straight across the grass and get to the other side of Green Path. But we are getting pretty close already towards the end of the island, because after this, it's just Green Path and then Outcast Island, if I'm not mistaken, and look how slowly that HP went down. But look at that, 2700 experience for the boy Blaze as he gets to level 51. And we defeated the Breeder, fitting that she had a Chansey, of course. Let's go ahead and throw Koopa up front now. Everyone's slowly but surely catching back up to Ash. And here's a Bug Catcher. Dang it, I wish I kept out Rapidash then. That would have been very convenient. Oh well, it is what it is. Hey, and you have a Heracross. I wish we could just steal this, guys. You know, 
That'd be pretty clutch. All right, I'll give you a Surf. It'll probably take two for you to go down. Um, going back to Scarlet and Violet, though. Also, it's going to take three, like, really? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> you hit yourself with recoil. All right, it'll take two. Anyways, going back to Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, I just think the games are so good so far. I love the new Pokemon that I have seen, and it did take three. All right, that's just karma. But yeah, it's like open world, man. I like literally so far in just like the first two, you know, big routes of the game. Or I think they're called like South Province or something like that. I've like gotten lost in them just because of how big and expansive they are. We almost lost a battle too to some random trainer because like they actually made some of the trainers challenging, which I really like. So yeah, overall, I'm having a really good time. I'm planning on streaming some more tomorrow, so... That's cool. And because it is currently Thanksgiving break for me right now, you know, I have time off of school. So it's like a perfect time for the Pokemon games to drop. So yeah, I am pretty freaking pumped. Joanna here has a Snubble. Oh, I think I've said this before, but Snubble always reminds me of that one episode of the anime with like the rich old lady and the Snubble didn't like her or whatever. Unfortunately, this Snubble has Intimidate. I mean, come on, how could you get Intimidated? I know it has a mean face, but like, it's a Snubble. And then you go for Roar. Dude, come on. All right, you know what, Coco's fine. We're gonna hit you with Psychic. Maybe it'll be a one-shot since you're just a little baby. You know, you're not a Grand Bull. Also, Fairy-type is not a thing, so these things are still normal, of course. And great, we had to split all of that experience. Thanks a lot, Last Joanna. Moving along the top, though, I believe we have a second youngster here. And I don't know how many youngsters are in here. Not sure why I said second, but we're going to fight him. That's all I know. Youngster Nash had two Weeping Bells and a Victory Bell. Now, I'm pretty sure if you look at this place from, like, the top view, it might actually, like, make a little image with the patterns in the grass. I'm sure that's why this place is called Pattern Bush. But, you know, we can't really do that. Let me see if it gives me, like, an overview here on Bulbapedia. I doubt it it does, though. Let's see. Does it? Uh, no, it just gets, like, covered by trees. Okay, well, I guess the world will never know what pattern is made out in Pattern Bush. It actually might be down here. Hold on. I'm going to try and find this for you guys while we're just destroying Clefairies. Oh, and you know what? It doesn't make out a pattern. It's literally just random lines in the freaking grass. All right, well, uh... That's, yeah, that's great, I guess. Sure. I thought it would make some, like, really cool image, but no. It does not, unfortunately. All right, here is a Clefable. And, yeah, I realized how many trainers are, uh, how many trainers are in this little section. So, expect a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but a decent amount of cutting out battles in today's video. And really throughout, like, six and even seven islands, just because I know how big these islands are. They're not messing around, man. They're really not. All right, down goes Breeder Allison. And let's move on to the uh, camper who's kind of just chilling up here in the corner. He had a pretty cool team of Pinsir and Heracross. Perfect for Dodrio, who was about to level up after we defeat Mr. Bugcatcher right here. And I'm kind of just zigzagging my way back and forth. Oh my goodness, you have four Pokemon. It's a Yanma, though, so that's kind of sweet. But yeah, I'm just zigzagging back and forth, making sure I don't miss anything. And uh, yeah, this will definitely level up Dodrio. This will probably be like an Oko sweep. Let's be honest, no one in this battle is living a single drill pick. So uh, Yanma, gosh, we're even faster too. Shows you how speedy Hydra is. Oh, but you go for Detect. Really stop delaying the inevitable, my boy. And I'm realizing, that, uh, bleh, I'm realizing now this episode's going to be like over 20 minutes, but that's okay. I wanted to cover like the whole north side in today's video and then we'll worry about the south side tomorrow because back in uh, Ruin Valley and stuff, there's still like plenty of trainers to battle. And as I said earlier, it's also the location of the Sapphire, but there may or may not be someone there that kind of stops us from getting the Sapphire. So, you know, you got to watch out for that. Anyways, this dude has one final Pokemon who probably doesn't want to be sent out just seeing all of its teammates die to Drill Pack. But it's got to happen, Beedrill. I hate to do it to you, buddy. Down you go. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw, I guess, Coco up front now. He's the next one to get to level 52. There we go. We defeated Bugcatcher Jonah. Kind of sounds like Joanna, the trainer we fought earlier. And uh, here we go, Coco. 
get back up there and let's kind of head back through the middle. I don't think we missed anyone over here. Yeah, we're good for now. Gosh, this place is bigger than like, I don't know, it's depicted, at least on Bulbapedia. On Bulbapedia, it shows just like a really small forest, but no, there's a ton of people here. That dude's Venonat and Venomoth stood no chance whatsoever, and I'm sure this hiker's rock types are also not gonna stand a chance. Oh, it's not a hiker, it's a Ruin Maniac. Okay, interesting. Still has ground types, though. But yeah, another thing about this postgame is that we're seeing like a lot of new trainer classes, because think about it, like in the time between Red and Blue and Fire Red and Leaf Green, you know, more trainer classes got introduced, and because these are remakes, they weren't gonna add them into the Kanto region, so yeah, this is a really cool time to show off all of the new trainer classes, I guess, so I appreciate that, you know, the game developer, the, 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 dude, I can't speak, man, the game developers took that extra step, man, took that extra step, alright, Coco's gonna get to level 52, I think we might have one more trainer after this, and then we are finally out on the other side, it feels like we've been in here forever, oh my gosh, and it's just an onyx. I don't even have to Giga Drain. I can give this thing a psychic and it'll die. Heck yeah, that's how much uh, that's how much disrespect I'm showing this thing. By the way, Onyx's catch rate is like so much harder, um, or what, lower or higher, whichever way it is, than I thought it was. Like when I was trying to catch one for the uh, total of 60 Pokemon to get the national decks, it was taking forever, dude. Piss me off. All right, so we're along the bottom now. Yeah, we have a camper. She almost like blends in with the trees down here with that green hat oh my gosh a bug stung me well maybe get out of the grass and get out of the uh out of this forest in general because there's probably bug types everywhere and you have a bug type as well that makes no sense all right maybe it's your own bug type maybe your paris is turning on you dude it's that mushroom i'm telling you man fun fact if you didn't know paris is pokedex entry or well i think it's parasex but basically you know when a paris evolves the mushroom like completely takes over its body and that's why if you look at Parasect's eyes, they're like completely white because it's being controlled. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, whatever. If I'm going to be honest, I think it'd be pretty sick if Parasect got a Mega or something like that. You know, if Megas ever come back, like the best gimmick in Pokemon, but they decided to ditch it after one generation. That was like the worst decision ever because Z-Moves, Gigantamax, I haven't really tested out terrestrializing too much to, uh, to say. Maybe it is, like, really freaking cool, but so far, Mega Evolution stands above the rest. And, oh my gosh, we still have another trainer. Jeez. Alright, she just had two hop-ups and two skip looms, meaning it is time to get out of the pattern bush, or I already forgot the name, and we're back on green path, which is kind of ironic because it should just be the water path again, considering we're going right back to surfing. I'm pretty sure there's nothing new. It's kind of the same as the water path. Um, yeah, I'm looking through it. There is nothing. So let me see if there's any items to grab here. I think there might be a good amount. Let me try to... Oh, no, there's really only one. All right, it's just a hidden Ultra Ball. If I don't find it, then whatever. I don't think it's on this rock, is it? Uh, yeah, it says Westernmost Island. Man, I don't know my directions. Anyways, we're going to uh, start going north because that will take us to... Outcast Island. Yo, look at this Psychic. Yo, I didn't know the freaking Psychic Sprite looked that cool. I guess we didn't see any in the uh, Psychic Gym, did we? Because, no, we did, right? There's Psychics in there. Did I just not notice that cool looking Sprite? Then again, I know there's also those crazy channelers too, so who knows? It could have been all of them. Anyways, there's a Natu, which is cool. Here's a Slowbro, which is pretty bulky. Good thing we've got Ash. To knock this man out with a uh, super effective Thunderbolt. Psychic Jacqueline, you can send out all these Pokemons, but they are not gonna stand a chance. Thunderbolt's actually probably gonna not OK him. Oh, it is. Yo, I just underestimate Raichu, man. I feel like for so long, I've just thought that, like, the Pikachu line, even though they're the mascots of Pokemon and whatnot, they're just kind of weak. But I guess that's really just their defenses, you know? They do have very solid special attack. I'm actually going to go for strength here, though. Oh, you live on a sliver, Kadabra. Seriously? Well, luckily, these random trainers don't heal. Like, some other random trainers. <clears throat> Victory Road. All of those stupid, cool trainers. Thought they were so cool. All right, I think it might be this island. Maybe it's not this island. 
I don't know, it says westernmost island, and it says it's in between two rocks, so, like, you can't blame me on that one. There's nothing over that way. So, let's continue heading north, and here we go, Outcast Island. So, yeah, I guess I literally just missed that Ultra Ball. Alright, y'all can search for it if you want. You know where it is. Alright, that lady just had a single Meryl, nothing too crazy, and, ooh, looks like we have another double battle coming up. And yeah, I've got Coco as my partner. This should be pretty easy. I don't think um, Outcast Island lasts for too long because I believe, well, located on Outcast Island here, it is just a dead end, of course, but located on Outcast Island is the Altering Cave, which we will check out in a bit. Um, oh, this kind of sucks because, like, I don't want to go for Earthquake because that's going to damage my own mind. I can't be doing that. We'll go for Giga Drain then. Oh, they're... Also using a multi-attack move. Shoot, Polywar has water absorbed? Dang it. Alright, well, good thing I attacked it with Giga Drain, I guess. And yeah, that's hardly going to do anything to star me. I really should have had, like, Executor and Raichu instead. That would been uh, that would have been the smart play, but... Nah, I'm just stupid. And, uh, you know, that's just how we roll. Alright, well, Giga Drain is going to one-shot, so... Next turn, this star me is definitely dead. Down goes the Poliwhirl. Kind of wish that was a Poliwrath. Actually, no, a Politoad because, you know, Gen 2 for the win. There's a Rapid Spin. Hardly gonna touch my boy Koopa. And I wish I could, like, take this Giga Drain HP that we get and just transfer it to Koopa. That would be sick because he's, like, almost in the yellow. But, hey, you can't do that because that would be cheating. <laughs> oh, gosh, I sound like a nerd. All right, um, down goes the uh, little Sisson bro deal. Ava and Geb was that kid's name. All right, Geb, whatever. Um, let me just kind of surf around here. Looks like we have another swimmer, and uh, yeah, we're not too close to the cave just yet. That guy literally wasted all of my Giga Drains because he loved to go for protect. So that was freaking annoying. All right, right up here, you can get yourself a PP up next to this fisherman. And, uh, I don't know why I said Fisherman. Fisherman, I guess. But, yeah, I went ahead and put Raichu up front because I'm done dealing with all of these annoying water types. Here's a Quillfish. I'm pretty sure this thing gets Poison Point, though. So, yeah, thank goodness I did put Ash up front. And, uh, yeah, we're almost out of Earthquakes on Blastoise. We're out of Giga Drains on Executor. I haven't gone back to Heal. So, if you do end up, like, fighting all of these trainers, they can definitely, you know, put a number on your Pokemon if you don't go back and heal. But... We're very close to the end. There's really not any trainers in the Altering Cave. I don't really think there's much to do anyways. Um, I'm going to make sure, though. I forget what it's all about. It might be a location of... No, it's not a location of the Legendary, is it? Eh, I have no clue. I'm sure... You know what? You guys do the walkthrough. I'm sure you probably know better than me. <laughs> all right, Fisherman Tyler. That is a weird way to spell Tyler, by the way. I feel like it was at this point where the developers were, like, running out of names. So now they're starting to, like you know, spelled common names in a weird way. That's like their excuse, I guess. Hey, look, it's a rocket grunt. What is this guy doing up here? I don't know what they're doing, like trying to look for rare Pokemon. I guess what, um, that's what the guys in the Icefall Cave were trying to do. But uh, you just look like an idiot, my boy. Raichu is quickly becoming the MVP of the team. You know, he played a big role in the Elite Four. Then he just sweeped this rocket grunts team. So yeah, he's kind of a beast. Um, I know there's a hidden netball lion somewhere around the entrance. I might not be able to find it, so it's whatever. I'm pretty sure there's also... Hold on, let me check my item list. There's also a hidden star piece somewhere here around the waters. But if we head inside the Altering Cave, um, there's really not much to do. As I was saying, the only wild Pokemon you can run into in here is Zubat. Of all things, Zubat, like one of the most common mods. And yeah, it kind of looks like there should be something, but there isn't. Now, I think this place does have, like, some history to it or something, because all Bulbapedia is telling me is, like, oh, you know, you can only find Zubat in here, but I don't know, back in time, there could have been more Pokemon in here. That's literally all Bulbapedia has given to me. So, there's no items, it's just a random area to find Zubat. And it's also an area where I will be wrapping up today's episode. So, next time, we are checking out Ruin Valley, the south side of Six Island, and hopefully we're going to get that Sapphire. Not sure yet. For now, though, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day, and until then, deuces!